Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go through a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. I grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy it. Today we're going to be going over the latest WoW news and there is only one WoW news that we can go over and that is the release of patch 9.2.5 and its release date and everything within it. So we'll get to that very shortly but as always, we have the weekly stuff. So the world bosses for this week are Mortanis, Morgeth and Antros. Hop on over there, grab your conduits, your anima, your gear, whatever you need. Or even a uh, rep. Uh, the, uh, I forget what it is already. The bonus event for this week is Wrath of the Lich King Time Walking. You can get a mount from the Time Walking vendor badges. Uh, you can get multiple gear from the Time Walking dungeons as they are. You can get multiple things, uh, including rep tokens. So make sure you head on over to Estra Wrath. A load of goodies in uh, the Wrath expansion that you can use. Uh, so make sure you don't miss out on it. And the brawl for this week is Temple of Hot Mogu. It is uh, very simple. It's very much everything is increased in terms of its speed. So your movement speed, haste and stuff like that. And the point systems and there's multiple... There are multiple orbs or there's less orbs? Pretty sure there's more orbs. Yeah, something like that. Actually, no, I'm going to be completely wrong in that, but oh well. <laughs> Temple of Hot Mogul is a very fast-paced brawl and it's very simple. It's something that you can jump in, get an easy brawl wing, get some extra conquest and honour. It's very simple. But 9.2.5, we have a release date and it's one that was dropped yesterday night as of recording this so when uh, the podcast actually comes out it would have been two days or something since the uh, leak or the announcement was made it isn't a leak but 9.2.5 comes out on the 31st of may uh, for na and the june 1st for eu this is next reset which is insane we usually get told about patches about a month in advance. So 9.2, I'm pretty sure we got told it was going to be dropping somewhere around a month like before we actually got the patch. For it to just be next week, it's absolutely nuts. And with the amount of features that 9.2.5 bring, um, it's absolutely crazy that it wasn't sort of more of a uh, hype and build-up. But what's also really good about this is there's nothing stopping us from going into Dragonflight, which is amazing. So this is the last patch, the final patch of Shadowlands, and Dragonflight will be the next patch going into 10.0. And usually there's several months of, uh, you know, time between a really big patch, stuff like that. So we have a Season 4, which obviously we're going to be looking at in more detail in a second. But... If you're going off of previous sort of um, patch cycles and when an expansion would drop, this is around the time when the last patch of an expansion would drop and you'd go into the pre-patch of uh, the next expansion within September, uh, within the year, like if we're going off of it now. September would be a very optimistic chance. I think it would be more October, end of October, you know, beginning of November that we're looking at a pre-patch and then around December time that we're looking at Dragonflight. But going into 9.2.5 next week, as early as the 1st of June, is absolutely insane. And it really does look likely that we're going to get an expansion this year, which would be a real save for World of Warcraft at the moment because of how bad the... Patches have come out in Shadowlands, pretty much. We almost had to wait an entire year for the very first patch. So, you know, we're getting back to that really good um, cycle. So, or hopefully we will be. But, yeah, it's insane how they just dropped this bombshell. But let's get into the more meat and bones of the patch and see what actually comes along with uh, 9.2.5. So, I'll be going into these a bit more detail, but you have Shadowlands Season 4. Uh, is not at the launch, I will say that now. You have cross-faction cross fraction instances, heritage uh, race quest lines, renown changes for alts, 
new Druid travel form, and new lore conversations. So, cross fra- cr- I keep saying cross fraction. I don't know. I don't know why. Cross faction instance gameplay. In 9.2.5, I'm reading off of the official Wowhead uh, data or page at the moment. And yeah, if you're wondering where I'm referencing this from. So in 9.2.5, Blizzard is implementing the first iteration of cross faction gameplay, allowing players to play with friends of the opposite faction. Below, we have a summary of the current known limitations. So this is something that you can't do cross-faction. Guilds will remain single-faction, which makes sense. Uh, Random match-made activities will also remain same-faction. All raids, dungeons, rated PvP will be Um, cross-faction. Barring some uh, exemption, raids with faction-specific components, such as Battle for Dazara Law, Ice Crown Citadel with the gunships, etc., uh, group finder will be cross faction. However, the group leader may choose to restrict to the same faction if they wish. Um, you can directly invite members of the opposite faction to a party with battle tag, or if you're part of a cross faction WoW community. Oh, just hearing cross faction is so good. So, for me, this really does help. End game. I prefer alliance. Now, a lot of people prefer Horde. A majority prefer Horde, I would say. Um, So endgame content for Alliance players is a lot tougher to come by because there's just substantially less Alliance players. So when you look at the looking for group for uh, rated bat or rated arenas, you'll have 20 groups there, if that. If you look on the Horde side, you'll have about 50 groups. So it's over double the amount of groups and putting all of these together gives you 70 groups, which is absolutely insane. You've got a lot more variety to choose from. You have possibly people who play a lot more Hunter on Alliance side might not play Hunter on Horde. Therefore, if you're a Feral Druid, you might find more luck getting an Alliance Hunter or like a jungle comp in Arena or something like that. So Cross Faction is going to be absolutely so not game breaking is going to be such a quality of life change that people might not realize and you know for those who think that the faction stuff really defines them that is completely your choice and you can opt out of this cross faction instant stuff you don't have to integrate with it at all you can decide that you don't want uh, people of the opposite faction to be in your you know dungeon group or arena group or whatever you can tick a little box to say that and it doesn't sort of encroach on your beliefs in world of warcraft it doesn't encroach on your beliefs that horde should stay on like playing with only horde alliance should stay with only playing with alliance and stuff like that but for those who genuinely play a lot of end game content and look to do raids Certainly PvP on Alliance is so tough to find a group uh, just in looking for group. It makes it so much better and it will be such a quality of life change. And it's amazing that it's coming this early because we wouldn't have thought it would be here until at least Dragonflight. So for them to, you know, say that, yeah, it will come in 9.2.5 about couple months ago and then they just suddenly go yep this is when it's dropping like next week it's absolutely incredible and it's a great feeling to have so cross faction gameplay oh 10 out of 10 absolute best part of this uh this patch by far in my opinion honestly so we also have heritage quest lines for blood elves and dark iron dwarves so two new quest lines are available for Blood Elf and Dark Iron Dwarf players and uh, these uh, will be for your heritage armor and uh, mounts as well, a couple mounts. So Blood Elf players investigate a Scourge appearance in the Ghostlands. Uh, completing this quest gives you a Hawk Strider and obviously your Paladin or your Blood Elf uh, heritage armor. And for the Dark Iron Dwarves, players will help their Anvil, their, uh, their Anvil Thane regain schematics uh, for Dark Iron weapons. And this will give you a, 
uh, what is it, a hound, as well as your heritage armor. Very simple and very straightforward. The heritage armors we've seen uh, throughout the game, you know, such as the Mechagon, the Lightforge Draenei, the Void Elves, stuff like that, they're all going to be like this. And I would imagine that they would do something like this for Night Elves, or not Night Elves, I'm pretty sure they've done Night Elves, but something like maybe Humans or normal dwarves and gnomes they've done gnomes oh my god they've actually done quite a lot of heritage armor i've just realized totally pretty shit but yeah hopefully they do more of these in the future and every single race will have some heritage armor it just takes time you know implementing these small quests that are really engaging and giving you a cool looking armor set as well as a new mount stuff like that it's very very cool so renown changes for alt uh, Blizzard has implemented a few changes to Renown in patch 9.2.5 to further speed Renown acquisition for alts and those grinding other covenants. Uh, you can read the reasoning behind the changes on our uh, post or whatever on WoW or WoWhead. But ultimately, the broker mark of distinction, the item that you purchase for 500 gold near from the NPC near the Flight Master, uh, will increase your Renown to 60 now instead of 40. Uh, Renown catch-up is accelerated through Renown 60 uh, up from 48. And uh, basically these activities will now have a 100% chance to reward one Renown upon completion. So a Mythic and Mythic Plus Dungeon, Torghast layers 9 to 16, defeating any Shadowlands raid boss encounter or winning a rated battleground. Now... I really hope that that winning a rated battleground also means a rated arena, but I don't think it does because I just want to hop into an arena straight away and go for it. I don't want to worry about my renown being too low, but renown 60, honestly, it isn't that big of a deal. You lose out on a bit of stamina, which obviously does help, as well as your empowered conduits, which obviously do help, but... You know, at least you get all of the Covenant slots instead of having to grind, say, 15 Renown to get all of the lucrative, you know, Covenant slots that we know today. So hopefully they've upped the win rate or the chance to get a Renown in a rated arena, but I highly doubt it. It looks like the best way to do this is to jump into just normal Mythic and just spam them with, like, a group of friends or something to up your Renown from 60+. plus. And stuff like that but this is really good as it gives you all of your covenant or conduits uh slots available at the very start straight after buying this mark of uh distinction which is very good and something that is very much quality of life uh new druid travel form this one's very straightforward it is a new travel form appearance for the druid we don't necessarily know how you obtain it yet but it is a recolor of the cheetah form it is a gray and black cheetah form which looks absolutely stunning and i will definitely be getting it on my boomkin because who doesn't love more like forms to change into different colors different variations they're all amazing and can't wait to use it uh 9.2.5 is also bringing in the uh, or bringing in more of the stay a while and listen stories um such as the ones that we had at the end of 9.2 with Illyria and Farisa. You had uh, Jaina and Uther in 9.1. You have Bolvar and Mograin uh, in 9.2. So a lot of the lore stuff that happened after, they'll just have a little chit-chat about what's going on, like how they feel and stuff like that. They're very small conversations, but they are very... They're at least something to keep you going, to keep you, you know, thinking, oh, that's quite cool. Keeps the world alive, in my uh, in my opinion. So... They're definitely not bad to just have a little uh, look at when you can. Shadowlands Season 4. So, Patch 9.2 will obviously introduce the Season 4 of Shadowlands, but this will be at a later date, and it has not been disclosed what this later date is. I would imagine maybe a month after the season or the patch drops, a month or so. Uh, With the usual rewards, like a new PvP tier and others, this is uh, not a usual season, however as Blizzard is basically doing something with raiding a Mythic Plus. Uh, So what they're doing with Mythic Plus is um, 
Blizzard is doing a remix of Shadowlands Season 4 with new twists to dungeons in addition to the usual stuff in regular Mythic Plus seasons. So you have a new seasonal affix called Disguised. The new Mythic Plus uh, will basically... Uh, there will be a Dreadlord that is disguised and you kill it to gain a stat. And this stat is one that you choose at the very start of your uh, dungeon run. So whether it be Haste... And the more that you kill, the more Dreadlords, the more this will stack. So you can end the dungeon run with about 20% more haste than what you started with and stuff like that. So it's a very simple mechanic, but it is also one that will slowly increase your DPS and stuff like that. So there is a new uh, uh, Keystone Master Mount. It is the purple variation of the previous three seasons. It is called the Restoration Deathwalker. It is very cool. A nice little uh, twist on the colours. But ultimately, it is the same skeleton and the same model as the previous seasons. So there are new Mythic Plus dungeons in the dungeon pool, and this is the biggest part of it. So the Mythic Plus dungeon pool is changing with Mythic Season 4. Instead of the usual 10 dungeons from the expansion, Shadowlands Season 4 will have a pool of dungeons from past expansions. The first six dungeons are both wings of the Mechagon dungeons, releasing in past or releasing in past expansions, Tazavesh from Shadowlands, Operation Mechagon from Battle for Azeroth, and Return to Karazhan from Legion, respectively, uh, as well as two dungeons from the Warlord of Draenor expansion that were voted by the player base. And let's face it, the player base did not do a good job with this. So the list of the dungeons that are available for Mythic Plus difficulty for Season 4. Tazavesh, Streets of Wonder, Tazavesh, Gambit, Operation Mechagon, Both Wings, a Junkyard and Workshop, Return to Karazhan, Upper and Lower, Rimrail Depot and Iron Docks. Rimrail Depot is very weird because in a Mythic Plus setting, you want dungeons where you know players can really mix it up, do these massive pulls, pull absolutely everything onto a boss. Rimrail Depot is you are on a train. A train. So you just go straight. <laughs> There's really no uh, method to how quickly you can kill this or do this dungeon. I'm sure people will be absolutely getting it down to a T in terms of the perfect pull and how much you can just pull if you can pull things through walls. But ultimately, there will be a perfect strat for this dungeon because of how linear it is. So it all comes down to who can pump the most DPS. It is a DPS race this dungeon. Uh, when it's played in tournaments. And I'm all for that to be honest. If there's one dungeon that's you know a full on DPS race. They're doing the exact same pulls. It's basically a 100 meter sprint at this point. I'm all for it. All the other dungeons. Yeah people are pulling out these different pulls doing different routes and stuff but if this is a just 100 meter sprint fastest one wins it all you know biggest damage ever if people can start mixing up their damage you know they might bring in three survival hunters or something just to throw bombs at people like honestly do it it this will be more about gear management and more about the classes that you bring rather than learning the dungeon as a whole because it is very linear, very simple Grim Rail Depot. But, you know, it's nice to have a different sort of uh, dungeon in this mix-up of uh, Mythic Plus season. So it's good fun. And this will probably help them going forward with the Dragonflight Mythic Plus because in Dragonflight they're looking to do five dungeons that are from the current expansion, so Dragonflight, and five dungeons that are from previous expansions and switch it every season so it's constantly feeling fresh and renewed and stuff and you go back to the old five dungeons in season three and probably you know something from Mr. Pandaria in season four or something so Return to Shadowlands Raids as well is in 9.2.5 so on the raiding end Shadowlands Season 4 will also see a return to the Shadowlands Raids, all of them, Castle Nathria, Sanctum of Domination, and the Sepulchre of the First Ones. Uh, these raids will return offering a higher level of difficulty with better loot, as well as a new raid affix 
that will further increase the difficulty of these raids. So this is really good. This is the first time that they're ever doing this and it keeps all of the raids fresh and new from the expansion that we've just played, Castle Nathria. We haven't gone into it since the start of the expansion. So you can walk in there now and get loot from that raid, which is actually really good going into the latest expansion. And there might be some people who need a item off of Sidonathrius, which makes you ultimately more powerful than one that's in the latest raid but because of this fated affix it's you know just better it's your best in slot and stuff like that so in uh, the fated raids these three raids will be on a rotation every week so one of the shadowlands raids castle nathria sanctum or sepulcher will become a fated raid and uh, Fated Raids will have further scaled up bosses as well as Fated Affixes uh, to them. But in exchange, uh, rewards higher item level loot and a new currency called Puzzling Cartels at uh, Diners. Dinars? Dinars, I guess. Uh, when a raid is Fated for the week, all difficulties will be scaled up, including looking for raid. Um... In addition to this, there will be no Hall of Fame for Season 4 of Shadowlands. You can read more about it, yeah, at Wowhead. So, the Puzzling Cartels Diners are basically for gear. So, you once you get a certain amount of this currency, you can purchase a specific piece of gear that you might not be getting from uh, the raid itself. You might be wanting a chess piece, but you're just getting some legs, you know, waist and hands. So you can save up this currency and buy yourself that chess piece that you've so wanted. And this is really good. This means that there is a way that you can obtain the gear that you want without having to uh, basically rely on RNG for it. So this is a really good uh, quality of life for raiders. And to be honest, I'd like to know what raiders think of this because the whole rated or fated uh, raiding system for this season or for the expansion because I would imagine they do this going forward in next expansions as well but because I'm not really ma that much of a raider I'm very curious to see if people will or are going to be a fan of this so fated gear uh, vendors and fated gear upgrades so like I said uh, they'll be on a three week uh, or these vendors will be on a three week rotation um, you might experience bad luck when aiming for specific items to counteract this. Blizzard is uh, experiencing or yeah, experiencing with different specific loot vendors uh, that will sell trinkets and weapons with the puzzling cartel dinar. Uh, in addition to this, you'll be able to upgrade fated items via the uh, impetus or cosmic creation impetus and sacred creation impetus. How the system works on the PTR build you know, and stuff like that. So I'm guessing that you can buy these items to upgrade them further uh, to that quality, whether it be to a heroic quality or a mythic. Uh, there's three parts. There is a three-part quest line in Shadowland Season 3. Uh, current objectives to kill 30, 20, and 10 fated boss kills. Uh, the rewards uh, are, current, are a currency in which you buy the exact piece of normal raid gear uh, that you want once you buy three items the vendors leave uh, this is to curb the extreme bad luck the players may experience which a lot of people do experience uh, heroic and mythic gear updates will drop by combining a certain number of shards uh, currently 20% shards have a 100% drop chance what the shards are actually looking at it uh, these item works on these items work on a fated item, uh, including ones bought off of vendors. Uh, not sure what the shards are, but I'm guessing they are boss drops. And these are what you use to upgrade your gear from normal difficulty to heroic to that. So season four raiding rewards, basically, you these are just uh, achievements. That's the word. You have a fate of Nathria, heroic fate of Nathria. And why is why is there two heroics? That's weird. Is it the mythic? Ah, oh, yeah, they're just called mythic. But this one's, <laughs> I think they messed up with this one. They put the same one. So you got fate of Nathria, heroic fate of Nathria, 
and Mythic Fate of Nathria. Same it goes for the other two raids, uh, uh, Fate, Heroic, and Mythic. And uh, these are all just achievements that you can earn by completing or killing all of the bosses within that uh, specific raid on its uh, specific difficulty. So there are also meta achievements for completing all three Shadowlands raids. So fates of the Shadowlands raids and complete all of these uh, in Shadowlands Season 4 and the mount reward is the Jigglesworth Senior Mount, the big jelly cat to ride on and I think I might be doing that. That's actually kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's actually really cool. Heroic Fate of the Shadowlands Raids, complete all of them on Heroic Difficulty and you get rewarded a title, Hero of Fate. And the Mythic Fate of the Shadowlands is completed all on Mythic Difficulty. And uh, what that will reward you with is uh, ra- uh, Shadowlands Raid uh, Teleporters. Uh, completing this it will be able to teleport you to the entrance of the uh, raids and stuff like that. So all three of them, which, you know, isn't bad. Isn't bad, but once Dragonflight hits, it's kind of irrelevant, maybe. Maybe you go and farm them in, like, in two expansions time for the gear. But yeah, not going to be uh, that useful yet. And finally, we have the PvP Season 4 mount, uh, the Eternal Gladiator mount. So not much has been announced on the PvP side, uh, but we do know that the top 0.1% will earn... Uh, the title Eternal Gladiator, which is a very cool title, by the way, um, as well as amount rewards from the uh, like seasonal uh, sort of mounts. You get the Vicious War Stalker for both Horde and uh, Alliance. This is a wolf variant, and you obviously have your Gladiator mount, which is the Eternal Gladiator Soul Eater, which you can earn by winning 50 arenas. Uh, above 2400 so 9.2.5 is shaping up to be really good the fact that they announced it just a couple days ago just dropped it on us like yep it's going to be this reset you're going to get you know to do cross-faction stuff all of the way is absolutely insane i don't expect it to be a hundred percent i expect there to be a couple bugs still but you know who cares who cares if bugs are in the game because they can get resolved after like the patch has dropped. We just want content as the player base. Content that is delivered to us is fine. If it's buggy, that makes it even better sometimes because it makes for hilarious things to happen. Like you if everyone's not familiar with him but Rex Troy is uh, a YouTuber who finds one shots, who exploits stuff, who exploits a load of things in WoW, but he does it in a way that doesn't actually exploit the game. He exploits it in terms of game mechanics, like the game mechanics that he understands uh, to implement, give him all of this sort of buggy and wacky things that he can do, such as one shotting current tier raid bosses with uh, just so many buffs that he's got throughout the world, whether it be through these killable th- like frogs that you can summon or whatever. like The wackiest stuff is in a game, the more fun people actually have with it. And again, it can get fixed at a later date. As long as we have content to carry us on, like to carry the player base into the next patch and the next expansion to... Just give us something new and refreshing. It really does liven the game up a lot. But thank you all very much for listening. As always, do check out all the social media, stuff like that down below. Thank you once again. And go with Valor, friend. <laughs>